Nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy And silently, it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking no Hi, my name's Joseph Welcome to the Eclectic Philatelist, episode 16 Frankenstein on stamps. The title of this video is actually kind of a lie, for Frankenstein is not on stamps. The creature that is depicted on many stamps, the creature that we know from, say, the image on this shirt, is not named, was never named in the novel, was just known by the creature, the monster, or even just it but mainly due to movies and modern adaptations of Mary Shelley's famous novel, Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, we tend to call the creature Frankenstein, but it's not really true. So we're going to take a look at some stamps and a little bit of the history of Mary Shelley's famous novel, Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus. The Frankenstein that is most commonly thought of when we discuss that monster in our modern day is probably the image from uh, the movies, the very famous set of movies that were out with Dracula and the Mummy and the Wolfman and Phantom of the Opera. This 1997 United States stamp that depicts Boris Karloff as Frankenstein is probably one of the most well-known images of how the creature is depicted. And this creature was, of course, created for, or the image of the creature was created for the movie, and it's quite a, a famous image. It does even show the little um, kind of metal studs around the neck that supposedly had to do with uh, electricity that uh, created the creature or brought it to life and so forth. Uh, this stamp from 1997 uh, with Boris Karloff is uh, quite common. I mean, most people have either the individual stamp if they're interested in this topic or the strip of stamps that are the classic movie monster strips. Now, the modern image that we have of Frankenstein referring to the creature when it's actually just the uh, Victor Frankenstein, the creator of the creature, uh, is really very, very different from Mary Shelley's novel. Now, the story has been told quite often of the origin of this novel, where Mary Shelley is a, a young woman of just 18 years old, was uh, sitting around with Lord Byron, a poet, and Percy Bythe Shelley, her future husband, and they were sort of weathered in one uh, weekend, and challenged each other just for something to do to write a scary story. And Mary reportedly had a nightmare that evening, and that gave her the idea for her novel, which she named Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus. Now, it was book was first published in 1818, but it was published anonymously at that time did not carry her name. It wasn't until the next edition where she made some revisions and it was published in 1821 that it carried her own name of Mary Shelley. Now that book is quite a bit different. Uh, if you haven't read it, I strongly encourage you to read it. But some of the, the basic discrepancies in there have to do with things like uh, Victor Frankenstein was a scientist and a researcher, a medical student, but he was never actually a doctor. And I know in the modern films and things, and uh, it's always referred to as Dr. Frankenstein. When he created this creature, he really was desirous of creating life. And he wanted to originally create some very beautiful uh, animated life form. But uh, it was fraught with difficulties, of course. He did not have an assistant named Igor uh, in the book, of course. But he did try to create this creature, and he wanted to make it very beautiful. But, of course, it was hard to procure all the parts, and even the surgical methods in his day were very, very primitive, to say the least. The reason the creature was created to be so large 
was the fact that a larger creature, uh, the surgical techniques that uh, Victor Frankenstein needed, uh, made things a little bit easier if he could work on larger body parts. And he did uh, obtain these body parts from various sources. And in the book, it even uh, says that some of the body parts that were used in the creature were not from human. They were from uh, the remains found at slaughterhouses and, and things like this. So how did the image of Frankenstein and his creature go from Mary Shelley's novel to the modern image that we have today? Well, it started first with plays. Stage plays were very popular at that time in England, and some of the plays, of course, uh, became very, very popular among audiences. And they had some people had known of the novel or read the novel and thought it was very sensationalistic. And so playwrights, uh, disregarding our modern notions of copyright, of course, sensationalized their plays and made the monster much more of an evil creature. And of course, after this too, uh, movies started to, to come about. And some people think of as Boris Karloff as the uh, initial uh, film about uh, Frankenstein, but that's um, not really true. There was a, uh, an early film that was produced by Edison Studios in 1910, and this was a, a silent film. And the silent film is uh, quite short. I'll put a link in the description so you can watch it. It's only 12 minutes long. But this was the very first Frankenstein film. And of course, uh, early black and white film, silent film. Uh, it had to just use the acting and the actions of Dr. Frankenstein and the creature and uh, others in the film to make it very uh, scary and sensational. Um, there is no uh, stamp depicting any scene from that uh, early silent film, but there is a image from the silent film, and I'll put that up on the screen, and uh, kind of a scary creature. And then in 1931, James Whale, the director, uh, created the, the first and most well-known of the Frankenstein movies. Uh, this was starring Boris Karloff. And the uh, one fact about this that's um, amazing for this one is the makeup that was for that film. And the makeup was done by Jack Pierce, and he was known for creating a lot of the makeup for the classic monster movies from Universal Studios at the time. And this makeup took over four hours to apply uh, every day before filming. And fortunately, there is a stamp available that has an image of Boris Karloff um, being having the makeup applied for this film. And uh, that is the uh, origin of this uh, of this look and this uh, image that we have in our minds when we talk about uh, Frankenstein's creature. And of course, since that movie was very popular, variations in that movie uh, were produced. Uh, everything from kind of s very scary kind of movies to actual comedies. Uh, there was, of course, things like The Bride of Frankenstein, The Son of Frankenstein, The Curse of Frankenstein, Frankenstein and the Wolfman. And there are many stamps of all of these uh, early films that uh, were produced, and they used pretty much the same image for the monster itself. And fortunately for stamp collectors, there was also a, an interest that uh, spread throughout many countries of producing stamps of the Frankenstein creature that were not based on the modern movie image of Boris Karloff. And one of my favorites is this stamp, and this is from 1997. It's United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, uh, Europa, and it's part of their um, Tales and Legends collection. And it is a multicolor stamp. It was designed by Ian Pollock and printed by the Walsall Security Printers Limited. And uh, it is a, uh, I think, a, a great image of Frankenstein, of the creature, and it's probably more in line with something that Mary Shelley thought of in her book when she first created this uh, story. 
Another image on a stamp that I really love and I think is probably more closely related to the novel than the uh, later films uh, was this one from the United Kingdom and it's part of the classic science fiction series from 2021 and fits in with the theme of literature and the uh, company that designed this was Web and Web Design and of course printed by International Security Printers Limited. It's a first class uh, stamp, uh, no face value shown of course. Uh, there is a satanic pair that is also available for uh, this image and I really like this one because it tends to depict a little bit more of the emotional state of the creature uh, who is a character of great distress and uh, fear of uh, how the townspeople treated him just because he was ugly and they kind of thought he was evil and uh, very dangerous when in fact uh, at first before he was treated so poorly uh, he really just wanted to be accepted and find some sort of a, a home. And of course there were many other types of Frankenstein stamps that were produced over the years. Some harken back to the original movies and some of these just kind of used scenes from the original films. Here's a pair of stamps from the Marshall Islands. It's part of their movie monster series and these stamps are from 2014. And uh, they show uh, scenes from the early Frankenstein movies. The one thing that I do like about these stamps is at the bottom of the stamp it does refer to the creature as Frankenstein's monster instead of just calling it Frankenstein. And then some of the modern issues are just fascinating because they take quite a bit of a more artistic approach to the subject of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's creature. And this is a souvenir sheet from Jersey that was part of a series called Frankenstein 200 Years. And the individual stamps and the souvenir sheet is just gorgeous, I think. It was issued in 2018. Uh, designers were the company So Design. And uh, it's a commemorative stamp and it's just great. And I think even the fact that they give uh, credit to Mary Shelley as the author of the original book and they have little quotes uh, on the bottom of the stamps uh, from the story itself. And I think the artwork on these is just fantastic. And I think if you collect anything with Frankenstein or the classic movie monsters, the, the set from Jersey is a, a must have. And this idea of creating stamps of Frankenstein's creature that are appeared quite a bit different from the Boris Karloff image uh, continued and one of my other favorites here is from the island of Palu and this was from the year 2000 and this was part of a series called Millennium 2000 19th Century. Now I don't know who the designer was on this but I think uh, this stamp is one of the uh, creepiest designs I think and I think also it's a must-have for a collection of Frankenstein stamps and Frankenstein related material. Uh, I really like this one. I think it's very creative and uh, not too hard to find. I mean these are all the stamps that I've shown are, are pretty easy to find out there if you look for these. And of course for the collector that wants everything related to Frankenstein and stamps we can look at some of the uh, modern issues as well. And here from France are two personalized stamps from 2020. Um, and uh, it is a multicolor stamp that was issued for uh, as the theme of Halloween. And uh, there are some variants out there. There is the uh, green issue and the gray issue that I'll put photos up on the screen here. But they're uh, you know, not a very detailed <laughs> image of a Frankenstein creature, but it does fit the theme and I think uh, is something that should be added to a collection of Frankenstein on stamps. And of course, if you're collecting this, you can find other items out there. There are quite a few postcards showing Frankenstein and the other classic movie monsters. In the earlier part of this video, I had one of the covers uh, up on the screen. Uh, there are, of course, Cinderella's and uh, labels that are out there floating around. Uh, 
You can try and collect these if you want to add those to your collection as well, even they're not official stamps or anything like that, but uh, they do make interesting items to add to the collection. So Frankenstein on stamps, of course, now we know that it's Frankenstein's creature on stamps and not Frankenstein as Victor Frankenstein or incorrectly known as Dr. Frankenstein. And of course, no Igor. There was no creature like Igor as, as an assistant in the novel. Uh, again, I encourage you to read the novel. It is very, very different from all of the Frankenstein movies. And I know, uh, like myself, I'm a fan of all the Frankenstein movies. I try and watch every one that was ever produced, even though there are um, some pretty bad ones out there. I do encourage you to watch that silent film, the original one, the original Frankenstein film. Again, I'll put a link to that in the description. It is only 12 minutes. And in closing, I just want to throw in a couple of trivia items on Frankenstein. Uh, if you've seen some of my postings on the uh, American Topical Association Facebook group page, you might have uh, seen uh, one of these before. But uh, one of the interesting things uh, is, was Frankenstein vegetarian, the creature? And the answer is yes, he was. When the creature first started roaming the woods and trying to find his uh, way to try and live and exist in the world, he saw hunters that were killing small animals and the small animals were never really afraid of him, but they were afraid of the humans and he himself was so mistreated by humans that he somehow thought in, in his mind that he uh, wanted to help protect the, the small animals and the creatures of the forest, and he refused to kill them for food. The Frankenstein's creature in the novel survived off eating berries and fruits, uh, various nuts and root vegetables. So Frankenstein's monster, vegetarian, as am I, as a side note on that. Uh, also, Frankenstein's creature did teach himself to speak and to read. And in the novel, he found a abandoned hut that was adjacent to a small, very poor farmer's cabin. And the old man that lived there with his uh, son and, and so forth was blind. And uh, there was also a daughter that lived there. And Frankenstein observed them for a long time. And he could listen through the very thin walls and there's a little knot and that was a hole in the wall. And he listened and observed to them for many, many, many months uh, in, as described in the novel. And by doing that, he learned to speak. And he also found an abandoned satchel in the woods that contained three books. And over the years, by listening to you know, the family and working his way laboriously through the books, he did learn to speak and to read. And he was quite an intelligent creature. Whatever brain Victor Frankenstein used to create the monster was not the, the mind of someone who was uh, very poor in IQ or intellect. For example, and the book goes into this a little bit, and there's a lot of discussions on the web about the meaning of these three books that Frankenstein's creature learned to read and carry with him. And one was uh, John Milton's famous Paradise Lost. And another one was a book written by the philosopher and author Goethe, uh, The Sorrows of Young Werther, a very, very sad book about uh, suicide. And of course, he also read uh, Plutarch's Lives a history of the early world in, in Europe and philosophy. And so sometimes it might surprise people to think that the creature was able to read Paradise Lost. And also in the novel, he the creature learned to speak a bit of German, a bit of French, and eventually English. Frankenstein's creature. Nah, maybe not quite what you thought of as the movies depicted him. Again, read the book. It's great. So Frankenstein's Creature on stamps. There's a lot out there, many more stamps and covers and things that related postal history materials that I haven't shown uh, on this video. 
But if you're interested, you know, let me know in the comments if you have any Frankenstein material, if you collect Frankenstein or any of the other uh, classic monsters that uh, are out there available. And uh, let me know if you watch the silent film as well. So again, uh, thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy collecting.